Thank you for checking out this no spoilers movie review. This is for the film from 2009. Sorry, I had to refresh myself. From 2009 called The House of the Devil. It's a Thai West film and it w is currently streaming on the Shutter Horror Streaming Service with Joe Bob Briggs giving it his treatment. So I would recommend it r recommend checking out that way. Just saying. But it's a, it's a good film in general. Uh okay. So going to jump right into this. The House of the Devil. Music and the camera work both seem to be right for this for the 80s. Uh, if people are watching this review and you don't know much about this film, it's supposed to be set in the 80s. They went to, I won't say like great length, but they went to some length to make it appear like it's 80s, to give it a real 80s horror feel to it. And uh, for that reason, there's slower pacing to the film, which I'm actually fine with because it keeps the tension up. But um, I just think they did, in general, like a pretty solid, a pretty solid job of making it feel '80s. And me, I'm I'm a big nerd when it comes to '80s nostalgia. I'm uh, when I was watching season three of Stranger Things, I was just geeking out so hard on the '80s nostalgia stuff. It just makes me very, very happy. Love the '80s. So yeah, um, but they did a really good job. Uh, it has a more leisured pace. Just know that if you haven't seen the movie and you want to go into it, it's it's slow, things build slowly. Although, like I said, I feel like it keeps tension in doing that. Now, it could end up leading to a lot of people not really digging the movie because I know there are people who are just more used to, you know, current the current way that American film does it, which is more fast-paced, keep it moving, keep it going, let's keep people interested as opposed to you know, if you take your time, you can have things pay off in the end. And that, that's more of what this film is, is a take your time, take it slow, slowly unfold the story, and then at the end, boom, here's your payoff. And it works, in my opinion. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. And, oh, I, I actually wrote myself a note about the whole, like, keeping the tension up with the slow pace. It really does make you feel at, at certain points that anything could happen. So you're kind of, like, a little on the edge of your seat where you're just kind of, like, and something could happen here and something could happen here and it and obviously it doesn't happen at all the points where things could happen so it just keeps you guessing which is really fun it keeps you more engaged in my opinion uh it's always great to see d wallace she has a very very small part in this but d wallace does show up she's like a realtor um i just i just have a really soft spot in my heart for d wallace because a i think she's an amazing actress i love that she's still working because she's such an icon and b i um I've met her before. I met her at a convention a bunch of years ago, and she is such a sweet, sweet, awesome person. She's so genuine, so wonderful, and um, also I love the howling. I love the howling, and she is in that. Uh, the best part of this film, performance-wise, the best part of this film is Tom Noonan in his role. He chews scenery like nobody's business in this film. I just want more of his character. After seeing this movie, I'm just like, I want a whole movie with Tom Noonan and the character from this film. Tom Noonan as this dude, oh, he does he does such an amazing job. He's awesome. I love that guy's acting. I don't think he's been in enough, in my opinion. And anytime I hear the name Tom Noonan associated with a film, I'm like, I'm going to see that. I will definitely see that. Uh, although... Acting in general, everyone did a good job. I, I didn't think there were any portions where I was like, ooh, that acting's rough. It was all at least good, but Tom Noonan in particular really stands out on this. There's a weird echo with the audio in this film, which is one thing that really detracts from it. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I don't know why. It's just this weird thing. It happens from time to time. It's not super consistent. It's just randomly there'd be like this odd echo noise, and I'm like, what is going on there? Um, this was a mumblecore film. I don't know if people are familiar with what mumblecore is. It's kind of more like, kind of like improv -y, aimless, uh, dialogue. Um, Ty West and, and a bunch of his buddies, they're the ones who kind of put mumblecore on the map, I feel like. And, um, sometimes it works really well because it makes it feel more realistic. Sometimes it doesn't work very well because dialogue then starts to, feel a little aimless and you're just kind of like wait what's the point like what are we doing here also it can kind of lead to people bringing their voice down more and making it a little bit hard for that to for the audience members to like hear what's being said so 
Uh, Mumblecore, eh, half and half, good, bad. Um, this film portrays babysitting like I would think it is. Being bored and walking around people's houses, poking around, basically. Just looking at their photos, being like, what are these people into? How do they like their decor? Um, where, where are they keeping things in their house? Not like in a ran ransacking their house type way. But like that's what happens in this film is this babysitter's just going around, just kind of like, oh, and uh, how are they, what are they doing in this room? And uh, oh, well, that's a uh, that's a uh, interesting vase right there, and you know stuff like that. So that's how I would assume babysitting was, especially back in the '80s, because there wasn't a ton of stuff you could do. You couldn't just sit on your phone and just play games while the kids run around or sleep or whatever. Um, there's a good reveal of things going wrong to only the audience in this film. And that's one of the things I really like when it happens in film, where it's this kind of signal just to the audience saying, shh, the characters don't know about this, but things are going very badly, or about to go very badly. Just so you know, watch for it. And I like that type of thing, because it makes you fear more for the characters instead of experiencing things exactly with them. Which, you know, at times that can really work in film too. But other times, like with, with a film like this where it is a slower pace, it is great when you get that little wink of saying things are off, things are wrong, something's about to happen. Because it makes you more like, oh no, don't do that. Oh no, 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 don't do that. You know? So, I just like that. And then the payoff. This is the last thing I have written down. The payoff in this film is very good. The very end portion, for as slow as the beginning of this film, well, not the beginning, for as slow as the majority of this film is, the last, like, 15 minutes, maybe, that's an estimate, the last about 15 minutes are pretty crazy and really engaging and really well done, in my opinion, and I felt very satisfied with this film once it, everything was said and done. Um, it's very cool and atmospheric. I really like this film. I don't think it's like the most amazing film I've seen, but for what it is and for it being like relatively low budget, it was it was well pulled off and I enjoyed it. And this is a film I would go back to and watch again. <sighs> Maybe that was the third time I've seen the film. I think about the third time. Um, good stuff. So my five star scale with half stars in play, what would I say? Um, I think I could give it a four star. I don't it's definitely not a three and a half, but I definitely can't give a four and a half. It's a solid four star film. Uh, if anyone's out there watching this review and you have not seen The House of the Devil, definitely check out The House of the Devil. I think it's probably the best film that Ty West has done. I've actually seen a bunch of his films. Um, yeah, this one, in my opinion, is his best film. I've seen The Innkeepers. That's a little too slow for me. He didn't have the right formula, in my opinion, for the pacing to work with that film. Uh, the Sacrament is, I mean, kind of a little found footage e, which kind of takes me a little bit out of it, and it's, it's kind of like a a uh, rip off of uh, the Jim Jones situation. Uh, so if you know much about that, it's not that engaging of a film because you already know it all, you know. And I'm into like true crime stuff, so I know all that stuff. I know a lot of stuff. And very dark, but anyway. Um, Cool, but yeah, The House of the Devil, definitely check it out. Four stars for me. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking out this review. Oh, I feel like I need to tell you, please hit the subscribe for my channel. It can really help me out a lot. It can encourage me a lot to keep doing more and more of these. Put some comments down there. Have you seen this film? What are your thoughts on it? And give me a thumbs up if you want to, uh, although that one doesn't matter as much. And spread the word. If you, if you know some people who might like my channel, might like some of the videos I'm putting out, I appreciate you telling them about that. So anyway, thanks for checking this out. I really appreciate it. And until next time, keep it brutal.